Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here and share my, our personal story from, uh, from Barnaby. Uh, first of all, I just want to show you about the, uh, this is what we were talking about. I'm going to talk a little bit about the, what is the theory of the oppressed, a brief description of the, of the project, the goals, timeline, funding, and the promises, practices, and where were the measurable outcomes of the project. So basically, the theory of the oppressed is a technique that was created by Augusto Boal, a Brazilian uh, theater specialist, who took the pedagogy of the oppressed from uh, Paulo Freire, and put it into place in the moments or was very really struggling in Brazil. So he wanted to create and give voices to the people, those who cannot express themselves as fast and easy that, as they could. So the theory of the oppressed is a technique that gives powers to those with no power at all. I'm showing the three that Boal created to identify the different kind of theater that he created. He worked with people, like I said, different strategies with people at the different levels. And he created, he took the words, the images, and the sounds that we have in nature and in our own communities to build the roots of this, uh, this tree. And then he created some games to empower the people to be able to show what they wanted to express. Uh, he created, as part of the trunk, he has the image theater, where he, uh, Boal, considers this very uh, stimulating, because the image theater is using one person takes uh, the, the work of the sculpture and he molds figures. It's like a mirror imaging, so it's still figures, but showing any kind of uh, distress. There's, there's two kind of theaters that came out of, with this technique, and one is the newspaper theater, which takes articles from the paper and then become acting in those, in those pieces. Uh, the other piece is the Rainbow of Desire, who shows internalized racism, let's say the fears and the desires, the contrast between the two. The second part of the trunk is the Forum Theater, and this Forum Theater is the one that we use for this piece. The Forum Theater is a technique that takes the people to have a conversation between themselves, and then the actors are also spectators. And at the end, spectators are become actors as well. Because at a certain point in time, during the first presentation, the play is presented three different scenes of uh, oppression or, or conflict. And then uh, they start, the scene are stopped by the Joker. The Joker is the facilitator of the play. So the Joker controls the play in a sense of the organizing of the play, but he never intervenes in the, in the actions themselves. Uh, then the spectators, who are the actors, three, it was a group of six people acting, and then the spectator, who are the audience, the audience can step into the play and take the place of the person who they feel is being oppressed or is dealing with lack or lack of power. So that's how they give them the power to everybody. So the project, the Barnaby, it's a one, is the second, the third community municipality in BC. We're just attached with part of the Metro Vancouver. Uh, we have 236,000 people living in Barnaby, where 52% of the population is not Canadian born. There is more than 30 languages spoken in Barnaby outside of the official languages. Those most spoken are uh, Tigrinya, we have Arabic, Farsi, Dari, uh, Spanish, Tagalo, Burmese, uh, Nepali. So those are part of the different languages that we, that we get to deal for, for, the, for the community. So the project itself started with creating a workshop for inviting all the community in Barnaby where they could come and learn about the theater of the oppressed, be trained with the forum technique it started with the images so that they can develop through exercises a way of expression. Uh, during the process, they were asked to keep a journal to basically put all the insights that the exercises was gi were giving them, and then they were able to create scenes and understand, analyze the scenes or situations that they have felt themselves and put them in practice. The group, creates a lot of cohesion, and then the group themselves 
choose the images that they're going to be representing at the play. So after the theater of the oppressed, so after the workshop, the workshop took two, was a two week training session for those who wanted to participate. And then they were, after the practice, they were to do the acting. We had two presentations, two community presentations. So they, they were the same actors for the two plays. Uh, so it was more because he was doing a presentation. The first presentation was done through an event that Barnaby does annually that is called Barnaby Festival of Learning, where it's an event where all the community, including universities and service providers, get together to give opportunities for the people to share. But the leap role in, within the, the Festival of Learning has been that we connect with the community. So that's how we get to engage to different organizations and also with the support of the Selman Services Organization. So basically, the goals of the project were to local community members are encouraged to act and respond to incidents of discrimination and hate. So be more connected and be more understanding on what's going on in Barnaby. While we were doing uh, the different meetings of the Intercultural Connections uh, working group, we heard from all the service providers and the Settlement Services Organization about the issues of discrimination, the negative stereotyping, uh, the way people were called, physically uh, agree, uh, being agreed, um, had received aggression, physically and verbally. So it was more notorious, and this is very, everybody, as we all know, is more done to immigrants and newcomers, and most of the time, even their allies sometimes do not know how to respond to those issues. So we thought that a, a community, but the interactive play would be the best way to deal with these kind of issues. And we wanted also to have the people more aware of the possibilities of to take action. Uh, within the time frame uh, that we have for the project, well, let me go back a little bit. Uh, the, the LEAP has, we, have, we work under four streams, four different groups. One is the intercultural connections. At the same time, I am the coordinator or what is called the Barnaby Together Coalition Against Racism and Hate. This is uh, being funded by the Organizing Against Racism and Hate. It's a provincial funding. And so every year after year, we're receiving a little bit of money to keep the table working and a little bit of funding to do projects like this. So this funding was basically used from the provincial government. Uh, I will show you how much was the funding and everything. So the timeline, we were, we were approved late last, last year for the, for the project. Uh, we initially uh, hired the facilitator. It's a person who has been working in the community and he's a theater uh, director himself, so he helped us in the, the designing of the poster, then he helped us outreaching the community to select the participants. Uh, one request is that anybody taking part in the training was not required to be an actor or have any acting uh, for trade or any kind of knowledge for, about theater. So then we scheduled, like I said, the first presentation was done through the Barnaby Festival of Learning, so that happened in the first week in May. Uh, the training was done three weeks before the, the first play to have all the senses and the strategies that we're going to be using very fresh. All the people who participated, all the trained, were immigrants or had come to Canada as refugees in the last six years. Uh, the, the, we had two plays, like I mentioned. One was done in May. The second play ran at the end of September. And in between the two plays, and in order to refresh what they have learned in the workshop, we did a little refresher for all the actors. So it was easier for them to capture everything. Uh, we're just, uh, we just finished it. We did evaluations with the, after the, the workshop took place. We did evaluation with the first group of attendees, or those, the audience that attended to the theater of the, the Rising Above. And we did an, a second evaluation to the second group of audience, to the second audience that we have in September to capture all the, all the knowledge of the thing. And we're in process of writing the report that is due by the end of next week. 
Uh, this was the, the, like I mentioned, the funding came from the provincial government. So we use money for uh, renting the venues, for the training, for the presentation of the place, uh, the cost of the facilitator. Uh, all the was a coffee, tea, snacks that were offered during the training for the for the participants of the workshop and as well for the attendees to the to the two plays. Uh, the, the cost of the promotional materials and uh, we also give bus tickets to the participants to the workshop and the refreshment session. And with the admin cost, so the total funding that we use was just six thousand dollars. So what were our promising practices? Well, well, the idea was to take the problems and rehearse possible outcomes and solutions so that the people could take action in real life. Also to create awareness that everyone has the capacity to act and respond in, a theory, in the theory of their own life. Because we are all, at a certain point in time, we might be spectat spectators, but we can be actors as well, or we, sometimes we can reverse the roles and be both at the same time. And it also was to encourage all those, the audience, to be more proactive and step in and do something. And have the feeling of what is being felt to be discriminated and how would I do the things. Like one of the comments that I heard from a social planner from the city was that it was great, but I understand that I really have to work on my biases. So things that you may feel that are normal, but it doesn't become too normal when you're receiving the discrimination. And also to help people understand that issues of discrimination and mobilize and build a strengthened community engaging in group problem solving. Part of the role also of the BIPT, uh, the, the Local Immigration Partnership, is to work to provide the voices to more than 50% of the population who doesn't uh, have the English as their first language and who cannot participate in many instances where there is surveys of uh, public, uh, public uh, notices from the city to come to the town hall meeting and ask questions is because they don't have the enough English to participate. And the measure outcomes of this project was to that the actors themselves were immigrants who have dealt with issues of discrimination, had, had a learned effective community communication skills, and that they feel that those learnings would be able for them to help them in their own lives, and that the spectators have a better understanding, both how to react and how to support and become allies around discrimination and hate. And um, for the participants to understand that discrimination issues can help build and strengthen community by a group problem solving. I'm just gonna show you, uh, this was some of the responses. I'm sorry for the, I know the letter is very small, but those were questions that were asked to the actors. Uh, does the workshop help you become an ally? In this way, and they said yes, almost 80%. Uh, the, I can feel that I can help others in dealing with discrimination, almost 80%. The workshop uh, gave the opportunity to express their views, so they feel that almost 100%. And that they also mentioned, the question was asked, was it hard to express your feelings? And you see 50% was, it was really hard to present. Because sometimes as an immigrant or refugees, you don't know if it's an appropriate comment. You don't know what are you going to say. If you have to say something, you have to keep quiet or you have to step out of the room. So that's part of the learnings for the, from the group. And also that the learnings will be helpful in their real lives. This is just a, a picture. Okay. This is just a picture of uh, the responses from the audience. The play actors gave me an opportunity to engage and share my views, and the learning of these things were useful in their real life. I feel that I can help others deal with discrimination and become an ally to others. And uh, this is this lesson learned is what the actors came out from, so that we learned that having difficult, uh, these difficult and complicated discussions are about discrimination and hate are important, that through art we can contribute to social change, that we are not alone in confronting issues of discrimination, and that once you recognize that you have agency, you are encouraged to act on behalf of others, and it, that each of us is able to make a difference in the world. Thank you. <laughs>